Coach T Podcast and the NFL Show is presented by Turner Sports Training, TST. Ladies and gentlemen! Yeah. Hey. You know what time it is? Yeah. You know what time it is? <laughs> Some people are probably like, what time is it? You know what time it is. It's showtime. Fans, 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 and new listeners, old listeners, and everything in between, we are back. This is the Coach T NFL show with Kyle and Hicks. Fellas, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Hey, nothing much, man. Yeah, I'm chilling, chilling. Um, really, really happy to be back after the uh, holiday this past week and then uh, my, my little hiatus before that. So I feel like it's been a while since I've talked to you guys on here, and I'm, I'm pumped to get back. Yeah, it's been too long, man. You know, I, I kind of miss you guys. You know what I mean? Kind of miss talking ball with you fellas. But we are back. Um, and we, we, we are back. We First of all, we never left. We just, you know, holiday season it is what it is, man. Family and friends are, are first. You know, the, the show can wait. But clearly we are back. NFL season has heated up, man. Playoff implications are, 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 are with every game now, playoff teams are either making the playoffs or they're missing the playoffs that's just what, what it is and if you're Detroit Lions or Jacksonville Jaguar fans every game means either you're going to be the first pick or the second pick or the third pick you're just trying to get one of those top picks so every game matters somehow some way when it when it gets this late in the season uh, no Thursday games this week uh, actually before we get into the games I want to say rest in peace to the legend man to the to the to the to the to the to the, to the football the football video game the football booth legend uh the 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 i don't even know what to say man the, the guy that that made he, he he made our childhoods and i'm speaking for all of us you know we talking about john madden hall of fame coach and broadcaster passes away at 85 man you know and actually the older i get man 85 is not that old y'all we have like, to 70 right now you know exactly exactly so geez man 85 man john madden so rest in peace to him man you guys got any cool madden stories anything that that reminds you of john madden from your youth to uh to now just john madden and pat summerall hey, pat summerall yeah 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 dude i just madden he just created my life i mean i think i think i was probably i don't know third grade fourth grade when like the gamecube was it was a big thing you know what i'm saying so like GameCube, um, remember, okay yeah yes, so i remember like the uh madden 06 with mike dick on the cover oh man i'm, just, I'm telling you this video game and just uh i know john madden has obviously affected pretty much everyone in the football world in terms of our childhood and you know rest in peace like you said man he's a legend he is a legend man it's a legend uh he was what he called games as a as a TV analyst for three decades, y'all. Um, and he won 16 Emmys uh, for Outstanding Sports Analysis and Personality. And co- he covered 11 Super Bowls for four networks from 1979 to 2009. You talk about a career, man. Um, wow. You talk about a career. And, and a lot of people don't know. And I, I clearly, none of us were around for at least, you know, our age. But I mean, he was a heck of a coach. You know, before uh, before he got into the booth, so he's a Hall of Fame coach. That 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 term broadcaster uh, was the Oakland Raiders coach. Um, he actually made it to seven AFC title games, and he won Super Bowl, the Super Bowl nineteen seventy seven Super Bowl. Uh, he had a record of one hundred and three wins and only thirty two losses and seven ties, which is crazy. I mean, he almost won seventy six percent of his games. Wow. That's pretty okay, crazy. that's actually yeah, and that's actually the percentage is the best among NFL coaches with more than a hundred games. So don't sleep on the fact that he knew his football and he could coach his tail off, man. So big uh big John Madman, may you rest in peace and uh we'll speak for everyone will say you had a large impact on, on our lives, man. So <laughs> prayers for him and, and, and his family and uh wow, it's gonna be missed. All right, fellas, so let's uh, let's get right into the games, man. I promise you guys, man, 30, 35-minute show. We're going to get in and out. We're going to talk about these games. These games Again, fans, you guys know it just like we know. world is crazy right now. COVID is rampant. You guys can see, I mean, speaking of COVID, 
Hey, Kyle, your boy, Carson <laughs> Wentz. They may have to call uh, Phillip Rivers up, man. That's what I'm hearing for the Colts because your boy Carson Wentz going to be out this game. Um, I mean, that's affecting, the, obviously, these games and the lines and the blah, blah, blah. Who's going to win? Who's going to be out in the playoffs? Who's going to be out of the playoffs? We're just going to talk about the games and the, the information that we know today, which is Tuesday of this week. I, I'm sure without a shadow of a doubt, it will change by Sunday, but we can't predict the future. So what is going off what we have right now? So the first game that we will talk about, this will be, let's see, this will be the Miami Dolphins, who are winners of seven straight, uh, facing the Tennessee Titans. And let me get the number on that one. Let me save that. I'm going to need that right now. Uh and I should have had this pulled up. All right. Once I get it go, Okay, here we go. The Tennessee Titans at home, they are three and a half point favorites. Again, this is Tuesday of the week, guys. So we got a lot more time. So right now on Tuesday, Tennessee, they are three and a half point favorites. 41 is the over under. Miami, uh, winners of their last seven games. In those seven games, they have covered the number six times. Tennessee, in their last seven home games, they have won six of them. And the total has gone over in four of Tennessee's last five games at home against the Dolphins. Fellas, let's pick the winner. I'm going to go. Yeah, we'll start with you, John. Start with you. uh, I'm going to go. Even though this game, I feel like this is a game that kind of doesn't matter. Um, But uh, I I don't even know the point I was going to make. Uh Let's go. Wait, wait a minute. Who are these teams again? Who am I picking? I'm I'm, I'm, I'm tripping. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> you got you got you got Tua and the Miami Dolphins versus right. Tennessee Titans. Tannehill. Oh. oh yeah. Okay. So the Titans haven't been playing well. Um, and then the Dolphins they just came off of a good win, but uh, the Saints don't really mean anything. So I guess I'm gonna go Tennessee, even though they haven't been playing well. Not not strong, but I guess I'll go Tennessee. Now, I, I, I will say, because this always always helps me. It's going to help you guys. It's definitely going to help the fans. Uh, a couple quick stats just on these teams. Offensively, uh, Tennessee, they're 17th in, in total yards. Miami, they're 26th. Passing yards, Miami is better. They're 15th uh, in passing yards per game. Rushing yards, now obviously, has a lot to do with Derrick Henry because these are seasonal stats. But Tennessee, they're fourth in rushing yards. And I think uh, – Deontay Freeman, he's been looking really good for uh, for Tennessee. Uh, and points per game on offense, Tennessee, they average 23 points per game. Miami, they are, they average 20. Defensively, uh, they both give up 21 points a game. They're both top seven against the run. Um, in Tennessee, they are 26 against the pass. But Miami, they are 15th against the pass. So, I don't know if that helps you guys, but it definitely helps me. Kyle? It's certain. So uh, this one, I, I got a couple different things. It, it's tough because I want if you pick the Dolphins or, or let me rephrase that. I want to pick the Titans. OK, I truly do think that. And the only reason why I say that is because I think the Dolphins are pretenders. I do not think they are contenders. Um, yeah. I mean, they started set. They're on a seven game win streak. They obviously started on a seven game losing streak. Um, and these seven games they face. I mean, if you really look at the schedule, it's been Let's see, it's been the Texans, the Ravens, the Jets, the Panthers, the Giants, the Jets, the Saints. Oh, yeah, and then the Saints. So um, those seven games are not the most impressive seven seven wins that you can really have. Um, I think this one is going to come back and bite them. And I do think the Titans are going to win. But I really, really, really need the Dolphins to pull this one out. Wait, so say that again. You need the Dolphins to win for your Colts, right? Exactly. Yes, okay. sir. And, okay. and here's the thing. And like you just said, a little comment from it earlier. Um, I don't care who we got quarterback. As long as we got JT back there, we're, it, I'm cool. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And the way they play, man, they, they like to win games. Your Colts, you know, first to 21 wins. You know, that's how they play. So I respect that. Uh, Dolphins, yeah. The only team in NFL history to lose, to have a seven game losing streak and then a seven game winning streak all in the same season. Tennessee, you know, they're they're even with losing Derrick Henry about a month or month month and a half ago. I mean, they're still rolling. They're ten and five on a year, three and a half point favorites here. Um, 
and we're supposed to be quick on these games, so I'm going to try to go quick here. I, I like Tennessee because I feel like Tannehill, understanding that he must have a really good game, and they still have potential to continue to move up when it comes to the AFC side of the playoffs. Them at home only being basically a field goal favorite, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, I think Miami has kind of met their match here. Uh, both these teams like to do a lot of the similar things. And I think Tennessee being at home, they can do it better in this matchup. Uh, again, this is barring whatever happens with COVID, with the Coco. I don't know what happened with the Coco. I, I don't know. Uh, but if everything, everyone's playing as, as it shows today, and again, this is Tuesday. I got to go with Tennessee Titans, uh, and I got to go with them at home here. And uh, I actually like them to cover this number, too. I, I don't think that'll be tough for them to do. I like what Miami's doing, and, they, and they're kind of in a must-win situation, uh, which you know gives me a little bit of hesitation, but I just feel like Tennessee is the better team here. All right, next one, we're going to go to the – what do we have? We have the Giants versus – I don't know why I don't have these in order. All right. Let me go to scores. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is killing me. All right, here we go. All right. So let's go to... Let me go this over. Let's go Atlanta. All right. Let's go Atlanta versus Buffalo. Another 12 o'clock game here. Or 1 o'clock Eastern. Buffalo, they are 14 and a half point favorites. 44 is the over-under. Uh, the total has actually gone under in six of Atlanta's last seven games overall. In Atlanta, in their last five games against Buffalo, they've actually won the last four games, uh, which is pretty impressive. I didn't know that there. Buffalo, in their last 14 home games, they've won 11. Uh, and the total has gone over in six of Buffalo's last eight games when they face the Falcons. Fellas, let's pick the winner. You guys know how I feel about Matt Ryan. And it's funny because I think everybody was feeling suspect on the um, Bills when they Dropped it to, uh, was it the Jets, the Jaguars? Somebody's funny. But recently they had a resurgence. They coming right back. Um, I'm going Bills all the way. I don't Falcons, what? No, I'm going Bills. Wait, 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 wait. So do you, answer this. Do you think Bills cover the 13 and a half? Yes, I think they can. Um, mm-hmm. Just because the Falcons aren't a good team. They just they, they don't have nothing going in. Um, yeah, I'm, I think they can cover that. <laughs> Yeah, so this one, I'm actually, I'm also going to go the Bills. I do agree with you. I really think they have been really suspect. Um, I almost really want to pick against them in this, but it, I just can't really do it with the Falcons. Like I said, they're really not a good team at all. And I don't know if you guys heard, but you guys hear about that new uh, new curse that was just found out a few days ago? <laughs> What's that? So, so check this. It was a, some guy released a TikTok, um, oh, uh, I would say, I think it was week 10. Yeah, it was like week nine. Can't trust week the 10. TikTok. Um, and, no, no, listen, listen, listen. I'm and listening. he basically said at this time, uh, yeah, it was week nine because the Chiefs were five and four, right? Their four losses were, I can't remember what teams it were, but the four teams that lost, three of the four lost to uh, bottom two uh, teams after they mm. beat the Chiefs. And the only one left was the Bills. And he was like, the only reason why they haven't lost to someone like that yet is because they haven't faced them. And this is mm. in week nine. He goes, December 26, the Texans will beat the Chargers because of this curse. And what mm. happened? Crazy. So yep. saying that, saying that, that's why I'm going with the Bills because they already got that curse out the way. Okay. Um, lo and behold, you know, we talked bad about Atlanta the entire year. Guess what, fellas? They're still in the playoff picture. Like, still in the playoff picture. We're talking about the NFC. They are fifth when it comes to uh, it's, it's, it's the wild card spot. So the only team above them in the wild card spot would be the Vikings uh, and then the Eagles. So, yeah, it's, it's I mean, anything could happen there. Um you know, this is a very tough game. I actually have Atlanta covering this number. Uh, I definitely have them covering this number, 13 and a half. I think that's way too much. I think the Bills are, you know, they're, they're a little too up and down to be able to. They can cover it. I'm not saying they can't. Uh, but they also shown that they can't cover that. If that makes a lot of sense. So I, I would bank on the fact that uh, Falcons keep it close. 
And the fact that the Falcons are in a must-win situation to have a chance at the playoffs, uh, even after such a up-and-down year, I mean, the fact that the Falcons can still make the playoffs for a uh, first-year head coach, and Arthur Smith will be wonderful. So, you know, they're going to be fighting until the bloody end. So I'm definitely taking the Falcons against that number. Uh, and then the Bills, you know, being in a position where they are, you know, what are the Bills here? They're they're leaders in the in the AFC North, right, or AFC East. Um, but, you know, the Patriots are right behind them. So obviously the Bills are in a situation where they got to continue to win as well. Uh, I'm going to go with the Bills. I hate to do it. I really hate to do it. I almost want to take the Falcons, but it's hard for me to go against the Bills in terms of winning this game, especially the way they've played at home. What are they? In the last 14 home games, they, they've won 11 of them. So very hard to beat at home. But the fact that they, their number is 13 and a half to cover, I don't think that happens. I would take Atlanta all day when it comes to that number. Uh, so Atlanta covers, Bills win. All right, next matchup we have... Come on, T. Let me see if I can get this. All right, 12 o'clock. There we go. All right, Jacksonville Jaguars versus the New England Patriots. Uh, the number here, Patriots, wow. They are 15 and a half point favorites. Uh, 41 and a half is the over under. And actually going back to that last game, the Bills are not 13 and a half point favorites. They're 14 and a half point favorites. That is crazy. Crazy. Um, Patriots have a larger spread here. They're 15 and a half. Like I said, 41 and a half is the over under. Uh, the total has gone under in five of Jacksonville's last six road games, and the total has gone under in four of the last five games on the road when the Jags play in New England. Uh, however, the total has gone over in the last five home games for the Patriots. And the Patriots, in their last five matchups at home against Jacksonville, they've won all five, uh, which is kind of predictable. So with that being said, fellas, let's pick the winner. Not much to say about this game. Patriots, they just took a tough L uh, versus the Colts, so they they ready to come back in full swing and assert themselves into the playoff picture. I'm going Patties. Yep, the same thing. Uh, going with with the Patriots, not a lot to say here. Jags they are god awful. Yeah, I'm gonna make it quick too. Pats are. Not only are they a better team, but they're in a situation, as mentioned, with that Bills game. I mean, the Pats have to continue to win to, you know, continue to have a good playoff spot. So they're not slacking, not with Bill Belichick at the helm um, and not the way they've been playing. So Jaguars all, oh, I'm sorry, Jaguars, Patriots all day in this game where they got to win this game. So I don't think there's any chance Jags win the game. All right, next one we have. Let's go to ooh, let's go to your boys, Kyle. Let's go to Raiders versus the Colts. Uh, we do have news that Carson Wentz will be out for this game. He's in COVID nineteen protocol. Um, uh, 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 hold on, we don't know. They might be changing the protocols. If so, if they change the oh, protocols to five days, he will be there. Look at you! Saturday. Look at you! Look at you! Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> I got you. Yeah, new CDC rules, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. I feel like this stuff changes every week. So, currently right now, uh, Carson Wentz is in COVID protocol with the potential coming back later this week. Um, <clears throat> so, you got to weigh that. Colts, they are five-point favorites at home. 44 and a half is the over-under. Uh, the total has gone over in five of the last six games when these two teams play. Uh, Las Vegas, uh, what is it? They are 4-1 and one against the spread. Um, in their last five games on the road against the Colts. The Colts in the last seven games, they've won six of them. Fellas, let's pick the winner. Yeah, uh, you know, Kyle said something earlier that, you know, as long as 28 is is uh, has a, is, is in the game, has a jersey on, that it doesn't matter. I, I believe that, too. They could say, hey, Terrence, John, Kyle, we need you guys to uh, come play for the Colts this weekend. I'd be like, what? But don't worry. Jonathan Taylor's playing. Oh, okay. I need the max. I need the max, bro. <laughs> uh, so for that reason, I'm going to go Colts. Love it, sir. You already know who I'm picking. I, I got the Colts on here. And even if, like, I know I mess around with a lot, but see, like, in all seriousness, if Carson Wentz does not play, um, I, I really do think just Sam Ellinger is able to do enough to win this game because it is the Raiders. They've just been on, on all season long. They've been down, even though, again, they could still make playoffs. This is still a mm -hmm. playoff game, all right? Um, but, I mean, cut out. 
is out. Okay, sorry about that. Is that good? Just the last part. Yeah, just the last part. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we last week we had nine starters out, including our entire, um, all of our DBs, um, four of our five starting linemen, and the boys still came out and got the real good dub over the 10 win uh, Arizona. That right there should like put me at least, and not only um, as a fan, but just as a fan of football in general, I think anyone really should be on this Colts wagon right now after something like that. So I'm going big. I think Colts not only win this week, but a little spoiler, they're going to win, out, win, uh, win out. They're going to win the Super Bowl? I, I'm not saying that yet, but oh. we're at least going to win out the regular season. Oh, the regular we're going to get at okay. least one playoff win. I, but I'm telling you right, I'm not regular kidding. If we, if we win these last, if we win these last two games, I might have to drop some, uh, some on that little Super oh, Bowl. Oh yeah, you have to Super Bowl fan account. You know, you have to, you have to. That'd be smart, man. I, I wouldn't tell you any different. All right, I'm going the other way. I'm going with the Raiders. I'm sorry to break your heart, Kyle. Like it is what it yeah. is, man. Yeah, it is what it is, man. Especially if Carson Wentz is not playing. Like, and the fact that the Raiders can still, similar to the Atlanta Falcons, can still somehow, some way, God's green earth, this team can still make the playoffs. So, if you look at the stats here, um, you know, yards per game, they're about even. Uh, passing yards per game, Las Vegas, I mean, they are head and shoulders. They're top five passing yards per game against the, tw- you know, number 22, which is the Indianapolis Colts. Obviously, the Colts, they run the ball well. So, the complete opposites there. Colts are number two. You know, the Raiders are number 28 points per game. Colts are, tw- they average 28 points a game. Raiders, they average 21. So offensively, you know, besides what? Passing yards. I mean, the Colts are a better offense. Defense, you know, it, you would think that the Colts have a better defense, but yards per game, Vegas, they're ninth as opposed to 15th for the Colts. Uh, passing yards, the Raiders are better against the pass. Uh, against the, the the run, the Colts are a little bit better. And points per game, that's that's where it gets tricky. The Colts are 11th, and the Las Vegas Raiders are 26. Now, how much of that happens if Carson Wentz is not playing? Right? I know you can turn around and hand the ball off. Anybody can do that, right? My mama can turn around and hand the ball off to to Jonathan Taylor. But when you when that's all you have and there's no threat of anything else, and I'm not saying Sam Ellinger cannot do that. Obviously, he's an NFL quarterback for a reason. Had a really good career at Texas, but I got to go with Vegas and the fact that they can see an opportunity in front of them. Like, hey, even after this crazy, seemingly cursed year, we can still make the playoffs. And now we get to play a team that, yeah, they're red hot, but they're about to play a rookie quarterback. And we got a veteran quarterback like, we got to like our chances. So, yeah, I'm rolling with Las Vegas here, and I got Las Vegas to not only cover this number, obviously, the, the number is five, but I got them winning outright. All right, next matchup, we're going to go with, my friends, what do we want to go with? Let's go to, we did that one, did that one. Okay, perfect. All right, let's go to the reigning champs, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They are on the road against the New York Jets. The Bucks. they are 13-point favorites here. 46 is the over-under if I can find this, here we go. Perfect. The total has gone under in seven of the Bucks' last eight games against the Jets. Uh, Tampa Bay in their last six games overall, they've covered the number five times. Uh, the Jets, they are 5-0 and against the spread in their last five games at home against Tampa Bay. Okay, and they're also 5-0 and straight up in their last five home games against Tampa Bay. Clearly, a lot of those games did not happen against Tom Brady. So you can almost throw that stat out the window. Fellas, let's pick the winner. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of these games this week are just kind of, you know, just, just we're just going through them. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Bucks. Do they cover thirteen? Woo! Ooh. Zach baby. Wilson, baby face assassin. He can, can he pulled that move last week. You no, know, that was a nice little play, man. Down. Uh, a little scramble. That was the scramble with the throw. That was a nice little play, Hicks. No, because <laughs> I don't know. Tom Brady's played the Jets a lot, 13's a lot. I'll say no, they don't. Uh, personally, I think this game is going to be a snooze fest. Okay, I'm not kidding. To really think about it, um, I don't think the Bucks have clinched yet, if I'm mistaken. Have they yet? Let me look. Let me look. You can keep talking, but let me look. Okay. Well, e- either way, I mean, even if the Bucks lose the next two games, I'm pretty sure they're still going to be in the playoffs. Um, vice versa, the Jets. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they've they've clinched. They've clinched. They clinched last okay. game, actually. So, yeah. Yep. 
Okay, yeah. So I mean, they're already in. Um, and the Jets, mm. really their schedule, they got the. They're they're finishing off the Bucks and then the Bills. So I don't think that's really flav, um, you know, favorable for them. But even if they win these these next two games, they're still not gonna make the playoffs. So I don't think there's gonna be a lot of like I, I don't want to say effort, but a lot of like intensity with with this game from either one of the teams. Something's telling me to pick the Jets, but I'm gonna go against my gut and I'm gonna go with the Bucks because it just seems like a smart move. Yeah, you know what? And the fact that the Bucks have already clinched, um, I don't think any coach is saying, "Hey, let's just lay down." Like, I don't think no, that, I think no. that's bad karma. You know what I mean? Like, I think I, high school coach wouldn't say that. You know, let alone a guy that gets paid millions of dollars. Uh, speaking of the coach, uh, Bruce Arians, he's actually. He was a part of. Uh, he was hit by the Coco as well, so he's he's in protocol as well. Let's see if he's able to come back for this game. Um, they've already clinched. Talking about the Buccaneers now, the Jets are in a, a, a peculiar situation because they already have they have four wins, um, and they are one of three teams with four wins, including the Texans and the Giants. And other two teams with less wins are the are the Lions and the Jags, and they have two wins each. So. Is there a way they can get the num- number one pick? Probably not. Uh, is there a way they can get a top three pick? I, I don't know. I don't know how that shakes out. So, do they have incentive to lose? Not really, right? Because, I mean, it, if, if they win this game, now they become one of four teams with five wins. And if they lose this game, now they can, you know, maybe move up to a, a number three pick. I'm already thinking about this and talking about this too much. I think the I hate to say it, but I think the Jets cover. Uh, but in terms of winning, if Tom Brady is playing and he's in there, he ain't trying to lose. And I don't, I don't think he's lost to the Jets in a long, long time. A very long time. Maybe when Vinny Testaverde was still playing. I don't know. Like he hasn't lost to them in a very long time. So I don't if he's out on the field, we're talking about Tom Brady here. He's out on the field. He ain't waste, he ain't wasting it Sundays. He ain't got a lot of them. So uh, I gotta go with Tom Brady if he's playing, which I assume he is. Uh, but in terms of covering that number 13, now nah, I think the Jets gonna play hard, man. And I, I don't think for the Jets, whether they win or lose, man, it, it doesn't really have any ramifications because I don't think they can get the top pick. And uh, if they win, then you know, obviously they can celebrate. So I like the Jets to cover and I like the Bucks to win. All right, next game. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Um did that one, did that one. All right, we're rolling. Cool. So let's go to Nice. The Rams versus the Ravens. This will be a really good game. So Rams, Ravens, the Rams. Yes, the Rams are favorites. They are three and a half point favorites on the road in Baltimore. Forty six and a half is the over under in uh, the Rams in their last five games. They've won four of them. Baltimore in their last five games against the Rams. They won four of them uh, in Baltimore in the last 10 home games. They've won eight of those and a total has gone over in four of L.A. Rams last five road games. Fellas, let's pick the winner. You know, um, the Rams have been kind of sneaking in some wins here lately. They haven't been playing necessarily great. They got a win last week and had like three or four turnovers. But um, I still, I got them taking this one. Uh, they're getting they're getting playoff prepped. And the Ravens have just been shaky. Um, I think the Bengals are going to uh, take that division. Not that the Ravens aren't going to play hard, but um, I got to go Rams on this one. Yeah, so I guess my big question is is um um what was his name? Tyler um Tyler Huntley. Uh, is he back off of the COVID list yet or is Ooh, he still? Oh yeah, because he got on? hit last week with the Coco. Um that I do not know, but I can find out. If as much as I like the Rams, if if Huntley is playing, I just think he's so similar to Lamar. Um and then the team loves him so much. I think I'm going to go with the Ravens, honestly, if he plays. And if he doesn't, then no, I will for sure go Rams. Um, but the only reason, and the big reason why I'm going with the Ravens on this one is mostly just because, like, th- this season has been one of the craziest seasons. I mean, I'm pretty sure we still have, like, 25 teams that can still make the, can still make the playoffs right now some type of way. Um, so that means there's a lot, of, a lot of teams have lost a lot of games they weren't supposed to and vice versa. I just feel like with a lot of pressure on the Rams right now um you know to try to get in the, in the playoffs um just, I don't know I just I'm going with the Ravens just because I got a gut feeling about it yeah uh it shows that Huntley is not on the COVID list right now I don't know if that's you know, okay. you know maybe. by Sunday and maybe that's even better maybe it doesn't change um 
And I think it's showing that Lamar Jackson is questionable. So Lamar may play in it. The Ravens are in a position where you talk about they're one of those teams that needs to stack up a couple wins and they want to make the playoffs. Um, so as, as a wild card. Um, so with that being said, I mean, that's that's clearly a factor there. Um, did you have more on this game you want to talk about? No, no, I'm good. I'm, just, I'm going okay. Ravens. All right, you're going Ravens and Hicks, you're going Rams, right? Yep, I'm going Rams. All right, cool. All right, so, um, yeah, this is tough, man, uh, because with the quarterback situation for the Ravens, we don't know who's going to be playing. Um, and the Rams have just been so dang hot, man. In the last five games, they, they're winners of four of them. Um, but the Ravens at home in the last 10 home games, they, they've won 80% of the last 10 home games. So they're a tough team at home. Uh, I really like, honestly, I, I like I like the under here. Um, I don't know why. I was like, you know, I don't think a lot of points would be scored here. But in terms of winning the actual game, um, I'm going to join forces with you, Kyle. I'm going to go with the Ravens, right? Because the Rams are in a situation where, again, I don't think any NFL team, unless it's the last game of the year and they're just sitting a bunch of guys, I don't think they want to just give up losses. But in terms of who actually needs this game more, quote unquote, I mean, it's clearly the Baltimore Ravens. And if they have Lamar Jackson back, I know he's coming off that ankle injury, but if he's able to come back and be 75% of a Superman of, of what he's shown to be early in the year, uh, majority of the year, then I got to go with the Ravens in a, in a must-win situation. So I got the Ravens covering. I got the Ravens winning. All right, let's go here. Bada bing, bada boom. Nice. Philadelphia Eagles, Hicks, your squad. Uh, Eagles, they are three and a half point favorites here. This is a divisional game. Nice. One of our first ones. Uh, Eagles play the Washington football team. Again, the Eagles are three and a half point favorites here. 46 is the over under. All right. Philly in their last six games, they've won five of them. So they're scorching hot here. Uh, and the total has gone over in four of the last five matchups between these two teams. However, the total has gone under in four of the last five home games for the Washington football team. Fellas, let's pick the winner. You already know who I got to go with. Got to be the yep. Eagles. Yep. And uh, they've been on fire. And um, if we can't beat this Washington team that just got destroyed by the uh, Cowboys and we don't deserve to go to the playoffs so Eagles I like it yeah too I feel like the Eagles made me eat my words this year because I was just hating them uh, for like the whole first half of the season but they've really picked it up they finally learned how to run the ball and ever since they figured that out they've been winning so I'm gonna go Eagles uh, for this game as well I hate to do it, man. I hate to, you know, three's company, as they say. Uh, but I'm going to join y'all company, man. I, I'm i going to go with the Eagles as well. Washington football team that had, you know, they were they were, they were were a, a, a sticky team for about a month or so of the, of the season, man. Uh, but they kind of hit some some rougher times, man. It just, it hasn't looked good. Um, quite honestly, if, if, if I had some hard-earned money, would I take the Eagles covering three and a half? I would probably lean no. Uh, just because I think Washington football team, especially with your boy, and I always screw his name up. I always say Tyler Heineke. It's actually Taylor, uh, right? Right, Hicks. It's it's Taylor, Taylor Heineke. Heineke. Right? Yeah. Taylor, Taylor Heineke. Yeah. Uh, my boy Heineke, right. man. He, he he he's back, but he ain't looking so good, man. He's kind of looking like that XFL quarterback that he used to be. So I would go with Washington to cover. Was gonna sound a little counterintuitive, but I got the Eagles winning this game, man. Like I, I just don't see in the position that they're in. The fact that they got to continue to win and kind of solidify their playoff spot, and the fact that in the last six games they've won five of them, man. They just haven't been rolling. One of the hotter teams. And honestly, I feel like they're one of those teams they make the playoffs. Not a lot of teams are gonna want to face them. Just a weird, funky team, man, that you just don't want to face. And if Jalen Hurts starts to get hot, like. He starts to go crazy, bro. Like it could get real serious real fast. So uh, I don't think Washington has enough. I, I like Washington to cover, but I think Eagles squeak it out at the end. And uh, you know, in the last seven games, they'll they'll become winners of six of them. So give me the Eagles. All right, next one, next one. Uh, let's go. 
This will be a quick one. I don't want to even go through the stats here. We're we all just going to shout it out. We got the Giants versus the Bears. Bears are six-point favorites here. I do not know if it's going to be uh, Justin Fields or who do we have? Um, what's my man's name? Andy Dalton. No, not Dalton. The other one. Who won last week? Nick Foles. Nick, Nick Foles. Foles. Nick Foles. Uh, I don't know who's feet. gonna be starting there. Uh, but the the Bears at home, they are six point favorites. 37 and a half is the over under. Let me read off the stats because we're gonna breeze through this one. We won't even give an analysis. Uh Giants, they are five and zero against the spread in their last five road games against Chicago. Giants are also six and one against the spread in their last seven games against the Bears overall. And the total has gone under in 18 of Chicago's last 25 home games, as well as it has gone under in four of the last five home games for the Bears against the Giants. Who are we all picking? Let's just shout it out. Who are y'all going with? Uh, Bears. Da Bears. I'm going to go Bears. 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 Yep. Uh, I'm going Bears, too. And uh, cover the number six. Who covers? Giants or the Bears? Bears. Giants. Yeah, Giants cover. Dang. Yeah, Giants cover. Bears win. Um, all right. Uh, this is a really good game, man. Um, Chiefs against the Bengals. Chiefs on the road. They are five and a half point favorites. 49 and a half is the over under. Uh, in their last five games, Chiefs have won all five, and they've covered the number in all five. Uh, Cincinnati in their last five home games against Kansas City, they have actually won all five of those games. It's kind of crazy. The total has gone under in nine of Cincinnati, nine of Cincinnati's last eleven games against Kansas City overall. Fellas, let's pick the winner. Mm, it's gonna be a tough one. I actually am gonna go Bengals on this one to get the to get the home dog. Let's go Bengals. Jeez, I was really hoping I was alone there. I'm also going Cincy as well. I mean, I, I, as much as the, as the Chiefs are rolling right now, um, I think this is one of those games that they just typically lose. And as you said that, I just felt like that. And as you said that stat, that makes 100% sense to me. Um, I just feel like I've seen the Chiefs lose in Cincinnati many times. I think it's going to happen again. All right, I'm trying to think of a reason... Do the do the quote unquote do the Chiefs need to win this game? Uh, they already clinched their division. Um, and let's see, playoff pitcher overall, wild card. Let's see, is there another team that can? I guess the Titans are. Yeah, I think the Chiefs have to win one of their next what two games to ensure a uh, a, a, a a first round bye. Right? Do two teams make a buy? A buy from each side, or just one team? No, just one. Yeah, so they definitely one team win on each side, and then a home field advantage after that. Right, so they definitely can. If they win one of the games, they definitely get home field. If they win both of these games, then they can they can ensure that they have uh, the first first round buy. All right, all right. So y'all both going Bengals? All right, cool. I'm going Chiefs. Easy enough. All right, next one, a first 3 o'clock game, uh, 3 o'clock Central, 4 o'clock Eastern. We have the Broncos against the Chargers. Chargers at home coming off of that nasty, nasty net. They should be embarrassed, y'all. <laughs> that was disgusting, man, losing to the Texans. Like, and Texas had a gang of people out, like a gang of people. And the Chargers still find a way to trick that off. So Chargers at home somehow, some way. They are five and a half point favorites here. 45 is the over under. And looking at the trends, let's pull it up. All right. The total. Oh, it's a bunch of unders. Uh, total has gone under in the last five home games between these two teams when played in L.A. Uh, eight of the last nine games for Denver have gone under. Um, and oh, ironically, the total has gone over in five of Chargers last six games. But when these two teams match up, typically it goes under in Denver in the last nine games. Eight of them have gone under. So you choose. Uh, so I'm definitely going under there. 45. That, yeah, I'm, I'm going under there. And uh, five and a half is a number for the Chargers. Fellas, let's pick the winner. Man, Chargers coming off that tough. L. But, you know, honestly, um, the numbers on Davis Mills are like he's he's playing like great. So, bro, uh, he's good. He, he stepped up this year. Yeah, I'm impressed. I, I got to go with the Chargers. Still. I'm going to go both on this one. They take it. Mm. 
I really wanted to go Chargers, especially since they're the favorite. And when they're the favorite sometimes, it makes me think, why is FanDuel making them the favorite, especially when they just got blown out? Um, or at least not a good game. I think they want people to pick the Broncos. I'm going Chargers. Yeah, this is the number two team in the AFC West and in the Chargers. The only number two to, you know, a team that's 11 and four, uh, which are the Chiefs against the number four bottom of the division Broncos. So, you know, they got to win by basically a touchdown. The Chargers at home. I think they do that, especially coming off of you guys know we've been talking about all year. Right. Um, I hit on it every time we talk. We have a terrible game one week, especially a a brutal loss like the Chargers had, an embarrassing loss. I think you bounce back, especially coming back home. You bounce back and, uh, you know, you you show out the next game. So I got the Chargers winning and I got the Chargers covering this game against the Broncos. All right, next we got the Texans against the 49ers. 49ers, they are 12 and a half point favorites at home. 44 is the over under. Why is this not easy to find? Come on. They make it hard for you, boy. All right, here we go. Uh, San Fran in their last seven games, they have won five of them, and they covered the number five times. Uh, Houston in their last six road games, the last game, the, the last win or last week, the big win was at home. Remember that. For their last six road games, they are two and four against the spread, and the total has gone under in five of Houston's last six road games. So the last six road games for Houston, the number, the total has gone under the number, and Houston has only covered two of those six games on the road. Fellas, let's pick the winner. What if I said that I thought Houston was going to win? We we need a segment. We need a Hicks. What if I told you? <laughs> 30 to 30 hicks what if i told you i love when you have these all right what are you saying sorry <laughs> what if i said no i mean i i really don't think they will i think the niners gonna get them but uh but davis mills he uh, i mean he's obviously doing something he got people's attention so um i don't know i guess i and also because I want the Eagles to go to the playoffs, I want the 49ers to lose. So I want to pick pick them to lose, but I, I guess I can't. I'm going to go Niners win. Wait, why, why can't you pick them to lose? I mean, they just beat the Chargers. You're right. Let me switch it up. Why not? I'm going to take two in a row. <laughs> oh, man. Peer pressure. Peer pressure. <laughs> I like it, man. Anything can happen. I like it. Hicks. I can't. Sleep. <laughs> Kyle, who you like, man? Yeah, so I, I'm looking at these picks and they're real, real too similar. But I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to go the Texans too. I actually wrote that down before you even said anything. Um, I think Davis Mills is going to get his third win in a row. Um, and he's actually, I honestly, I would not be surprised if the Texans went out this week, this, uh, the rest of the regular season and the Texans have to go in the off season thinking, you know, maybe we should give Mills a chance. You know, I think that's going to be the big talk of the off season in that pro in that, uh, that, um, you know, facility. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, and I really just don't like the Niners. I think they're just falling apart. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going Texans. Yeah, you um, and the fact that the 49ers may be without Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy G. He has a thumb injury, True. so he's questionable. And if any quarterback, I don't know if it's throwing hand or not, but thumb injury is not good. Probably one of the worst when you talk about a quarterback. Uh, so, so uh, Trey Area may be in Trey Lance uh, for the 49ers. So, in terms of covering the number, it started at 15 and a half. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is questionable now. It's 12 and a half. I like. I like uh, Houston either way against the number, even though they haven't fared well in their last six row games against the number. I like them here coming off a little momentum from last week. Uh, but 49ers in terms of winning this game, this will be much closer than what people think. But I think 49ers etch it out late in this matchup. Um, and I think they just lean on that run game. And I think Debo Samuels has a couple. I think he'll be in the backfield a little bit. He'll be a gadget player for him. Uh, they'll throw it to him. They'll hand it to him. He'll throw uh, a couple times. I actually got Debo Samuels. Now that I think about it, he's talking about FanDuel. If they have this, take this. Debo Samuels, he throws for a touchdown. How about that? Really? So, yeah, how about that? 
Another, I don't know what how to even preface it. Another person other than a quarterback throws a touchdown, but Debo Samuels does that. Uh, I actually have Debo Samuel scoring twice, at least twice, two or more in this game. So he's going to be a multi-touchdown scorer. And uh, I got the 49ers winning at home, and again, and a must-win for them. They have to win this game, but I do think Texans keep it close, so they cover that number. 49ers win. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's do a couple more left. All right, Arizona against the Cowboys. Um, all right, Cowboys, they are five and a half point favorites here. Um, actually, let's do this. Let's, 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 let's try to cut some of these games down before we do this. The Lions and the Seahawks. Seahawks, they are seven point favorites at home. 42 and a half is the over under. Detroit in the last seven games, they've covered six of those games. Seattle in their last seven games against Detroit, they've won six of them. Uh, Seattle, they're six and one straight up in their last seven games at home against Detroit as well. And the total has gone under six of Detroit's last seven road games. Let's just all blurt it out. Who are we going with to win this game? This one's really don't you really all speak? Tough. Don't you all speak at once? Let's just shout it out. Like, Lions, I'll, I'll, let's do it. Let's do it, out, baby. Okay. D Town. D Town, baby. Okay. <laughs> I'll go Detroit. Oh my gosh. Now y'all know I'm going Detroit. And now we all gonna be picking yeah. Detroit. Yeah. I, I don't think I don't think the see I mean Seahawks, they they've only had five wins this year. Them, the Panthers, and there's one other team that have five wins. Like they only got one more. Yeah, they were. <laughs> they well, were. Wasn't that, like, wait, well, wasn't that crazy for not for not being a believer in the Seahawks? I think hey, I remember that. Why are you bringing up old stuff? Yeah. <laughs> why are you bringing up old stuff? <laughs> yeah, they, they look. They look bad this year, man. Russell Wilson being out for a couple games didn't help them. Uh, and look, the Seahawks only have one more win than the Texans. <laughs> think about that. Right, what were the odds of that this year? So we all going Detroit Lions there. All right, cool bet. I like that. Um, Next one that we can kind of just breeze through Panthers against the Saints. Saints at home, they are seven and a half point favorites here. That would assume that I would assume that Ian Book is not the starting quarterback for this game. It's going to be Trevor Simeon or uh, Taysom Hill. Uh, 38 is the over under. Do I have any stats here? Yes. Uh, a lot of over stats, actually. Five of the last five games in Carolina uh, when these two teams play has gone over. And the total has gone over in five of the Panthers' last six games overall. However, the total has gone under in five of New Orleans' last five games. Let's all just shout out who are we going with to win the game. Panthers. Ooh. I'm going to go Saints. Yeah, Taysom Hill's back. Um, yeah, I'm going Saints in New Orleans, man. I'm not messing with the voodoo boys down there. So... They got Taysom Hill or Trevor Simeon. Anyone besides Ian Book. Like, I love for Ian Book. I like the man Notre Dame, but not after what he showed Monday. So, any other quarterback is starting for the Saints. Even if it's Drew Brees, they get him out of retirement. Anybody else, I'm going with the Saints. So, Saints for me. Saints for Kyle. No, Saints for Hicks and I. Kyle, you got the Panthers. I like that. Yep. All right. Uh, and then we're all going with Detroit there. All right, let's get back to that Cowboys and Arizona game. Again, Cowboys, they are five and a half point favorites at home. 51 and a half is the over under. Uh, in their last eight road games, Arizona, they have won seven of them and they've covered the number seven times. Uh, Dallas, in their last five games overall, they covered the number four times. In Dallas, in their last 17 games at home against Arizona, they've won 14 of them. And remember, this is the old school rivalry. Old school rivalry. Uh, between these two teams. So, fellas, with that being said, let's pick the winner. Uh. Hmm. I think I'm going to go. It's tough because who did uh, who did say Steelers played last week? Steelers or the or Cowboys? Oh, well, I mean, that's what. Well, the, the Cowboys came off of um, that big Cowboys. win over Washington. The Hughes win over Washington. They showed out, right? And, um, Ari- and then, Arizona lost to uh, yeah, yeah. they lost to the Colts at yeah, home Ari- against the beat up Colts. Yep. Okay. Why did I think that the Colts played the Patriots last week? The Colts must play the Patriots two weeks ago. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so 
two teams going opposite directions seemingly. Yeah. Going. It's it's really a question of like are the Cardinals going to bring redemption? It's going to be tough without D-Hop. Um I'm going to go Cowboys. It's I'm just I want you know I like picking against the Cowboys. But it's hard now. So it I'm hasn't just, worked out for you. Yeah. It hasn't. It's hard. It hasn't at all. <laughs> it's hard. The Eagles still balling, so you can't be mad at that. Right. Yeah, I'm also going to go with Cowboys on this. I mean, not only do I think they're a little bit better of a team, but uh, like you said, you said it perfectly when these two teams are going in exact opposite directions. Um, Trayvon Diggs has 11 picks now, which is freaking ridiculous. Him mm-hmm. himself has more turnovers than like half the league's defenses. Like, it's literally ridiculous. So, um, I'm going Cowboys. And then Kyler Murray just kind of – he doesn't look like the same Kyler Murray he was in the beginning of the season. Ever since he got injured for, like, two weeks, and then he had a bye week, so he basically had three weeks off, um, he just came back and hasn't been the same guy. So, I don't know what's going on with him, but I'm going to go Cowboys on this. Yeah, you know, the contrary enemy that would love to take the Cardinals, but – we all said it. They they they're going the wrong way, and they have not looked good. And we see how important D Hop is to that team. Like we see it. It's evident, man. Uh, they have not looked good with them. And then, honestly, you know, I actually read a stat: the Cardinals actually play much better away than they do home, which I think is really weird. Uh, but they kind of remind me a little bit of the Steelers from last year, right? They had a great start. Steelers last year, what did they start? Like 12-0 and 0 or something crazy like that. 11-0, yeah. Yeah, 11-0. Cardinals probably in their first 11 games, they probably won 9 or 10 of them, right? Great start. And then, you know, started to see some chinks in the armor. So I'm, I'm going with Cowboys home again, especially coming off of that huge win against Washington football team where everything was rolling, man. Everything. Dak looked great. Zeke looked great. The receivers looked great. Defense looked great. Special teams looked great. Uh, the fans look great. Coaches look great. Cheerleaders look great. And I think they continue that in this game against the Cardinals that are just wounded, beat up, and, and seemingly just can't get right. So I'm going with Dallas Cowboys to cover and to win this game, obviously. Uh, let me see. Let's try to rip through these last two games. What do we have? Minnesota against Green Bay. Green Bay at home, six and a half point favorites. 47 and a half is the over under. Green Bay in their last 14 games overall, they've won 12 of them. In their last five home games, Green Bay, they've won all five. And the total has gone over in five of Minnesota's last six games. Also, the total has gone over in eight of Minnesota's last 10 road games. Let's all just shoot it out. Let's roll through it. Who you guys I'm going Minnesota for the upset. Ooh. Ooh. Hold, 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 hold up. Now. Hold up. What? Wait a minute. Let me put some pippin' in it. Okay. Yeah, I just feel like Minnesota, like I always say, is the team. You don't know what you're going to get out of them. They lose the game they're supposed to win. They're going to win the game they're supposed to lose, Minnesota. Mm. Mm. Hey, uh, go, Kyle? Hey, Rod, MVP. Go Pack, go. Yeah. Um, yes, I sir. think this will be. <laughs> God bless me. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so you going with the Pack, uh, Kyle Hicks? You going with the Vikes? Kyle, you going with the Pack, and Hicks, you going with the Vikings? Okay. I think this is going to be a really good game, man. Really entertaining game. I'm definitely going with the over here. Eight of the last uh, ten road games for Minnesota have gone over. And five, five of the last six games overall for Minnesota have gone over. Green Bay's defense doesn't look great. So this is what makes me think the Vikings actually have a chance. Um, and that's also a reason why I think it's going to go over. I think it's going to be a shootout. One of those games where, I mean, divisional game late in the season. I think these teams let it all hang out. Uh, unless the weather is crazy. I just feel like a lot of points will be scored. These two teams played November 21st of this year. And it was 34 to 31 Minnesota won. So... Minnesota won at home last game. So now I'm going with Packers to win at home in this game in another shootout. So Packers win huge, huge points. A lot of fireworks, a lot of points being scored in this matchup. All right, last game, we got our Monday night. So we're going to wrap it up with the Browns and the Steelers. Uh, Browns are three-point favorites in Steeltown. 41 is the over-under. Potentially the last game for Big Ben. I remember when he was coming out of Miami of Ohio, man. That's crazy. I remember him, man. Wow. So potentially the last game for the for Big Ben with the Steelers. A lot of emotion, a Monday night game. 
Y'all take it for what it is, man. The total has gone under in four of Cleveland's last five games overall. Total has also gone under in four of Cleveland's last six games when they play Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, in their last 18 home games against Cincinnati, they have won 17 of them. What? What? 17 of the last 18 home games against Pittsburgh, or I'm sorry, against Cleveland, Pittsburgh has won. That is amazing. In Pittsburgh, in the last six home games overall, They've won five and they tied one against my Lions. Uh, so with that being said, fellas, our last matchup of the week, Monday Night Football. Let's pick the winner. I remember Roethlisberger coming out, being the first pick race with um, Phillip Rivers. And wasn't Eli Manning you maybe in that game? Uh, but, I think so. Yep, um, I think so. Oh four. What if... What if I What if, I, what if uh, uh, Big Ben gets this one on his last <laughs> one? I'm going to go steal. Steal curtain. Ooh. Okay, yeah. So, first off, uh, just for... Browns are favorites sure by three. Assume. Yeah. So, if they I run assume, home, assume, this is actually a six-point favorite. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> this is Big Ben's last home game. All right? Not last game. So, when we're weak, as everyone else does. But... I'm even going to do a little spoiler for next week. I think Big Ben is going to win out. He's got the Browns and then the Ravens. His very last times playing these two guys, these two teams, divisional uh, rivals. What is a better gift for Big Ben to give the city of Pittsburgh than a dubs over uh, over the Browns and over the Ravens? I got Steelers all day. Oh, my gosh, man. Uh, I guess we all on the same train. I mean, it, it is kind of surprising that the Browns are actually favorites here. Um that shows that Vegas don't care nothing about what we're talking about. <laughs> they don't care nothing about that. But I got to ride with them. And again, Big Ben's last home game here in Steeltown, like I got in a Monday night game. Last Monday night game they had, I can't remember what it was, a couple of weeks ago. I think y'all went against the Steelers. I went with the Steelers, and they, and they showed out in that game. I'm not going against the Steelers on Monday night. I'm not going against the Steelers at home. I'm not going against the Steelers at home against Cleveland because the last 18 games, they won 17 of them. And I'm definitely not going against the Steelers at home Monday night against the Cleveland Browns, a divisional matchup in Big Ben's last home game. Potentially, I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not rolling. I'm not doing it. So, yeah, give me the Steelers. Yeah, give me the Steelers to cover. Give me this. Give me the Steelers to win by seven. Right? What are the odds on that? Right? The three point underdogs and win by a touchdown. Like, give me that. Like, I'm all over that. Steelers all day, every day. I'd be a fool to take it any other way. Holla. All right, fellas. You see, I'm talking my talk, man. I, I'm ready for these games, y'all. Anything you guys want to say to the fans? Yes. I hope everybody had a great holiday and has a great new year to look forward to. And uh, we, you fellas too, have a good uh, new year that we're going to look forward to. Um, get through this NFL season and be ready to get back to it again next year. So, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I appreciate all you fans out there listening. Um, also want to give uh, not a shout out, but um, rest in peace to also my uncle Billy, who just passed away. I just got back from his funeral today. Um, Sorry to hear that, man. So yeah, rest in peace to him. Sorry to hear that. And then also a, uh, a, a as you know, life ends, life begins. Big shout out to uh, my girlfriend of six years, uh, Lex. Who? Whoa, keep possibly, going. I'm my bad. Is possibly bring a child into this world. So shout out oh, to her. Yes, shout out. yes, man. Shout out. <laughs> shout out, man. Uh, wow, yeah. okay. So super, super excited. Found out a few weeks ago. Um, we just announced it to the family. So uh yeah. So what's the what, and, so uh, Kyle, let me let me ask, sorry to cut you. What's the possibly? No, there's no possibly. It, it's there. You know, it's just oh, okay, it's okay, just gotta okay. have <laughs> I've never heard. I'm like, okay. Yeah, this is confirmed. <laughs> if 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 it's a boy, can you name him Coach C? Hey, maybe I'll <laughs> he think about it. I'll, I'll put it. I'll put the. I'll put it in there. <laughs> no, you. Hey, you got to name him Jonathan after Jonathan Taylor's year, man. Especially if they win the Super hey, Bowl. Let me tell you. He brings you that. It to a Super Bowl. I, hey, he brings us to a Super Bowl. I will name it Jonathan, Jonathan Carson. <laughs> yes, all of them. <laughs> Quentin. <laughs> Wentz. Uh, yeah, uh, 
uh, Reich uh, <laughs> Edwards. I like it. Um, well, good man. Congrats, man. You needed me tips. Me and Hicks, man. We yeah, uh, we we know the kid thing. So uh, best of luck. Get your sleep now. Have your fun now. If you gotta go on a vacation, do it now. Uh, do all that stuff now. All of it now. But hey, it's, it's definitely it, a blessing. Leave in two man. weeks, baby. Yes. Yeah, de- okay. Good. Appreciate it's definitely it. a blessing. It's definitely a great thing. You said it, man. And that's what I'm gonna end on, man. Like, you know. Uh, my boy 50 said it best man you know a man dies a baby's born you know the world turns like that's how it goes so uh so with that being said man a lot of people you know, we say this every year especially this time of year they don't make it through the year a lot of people didn't make it through 2020 a lot of people didn't make it through 2021 uh so if you're fortunate enough man to, to be that person that made it through and you got family that made it through like hug your family hug your kids hug your mom dad parents uncles cousins dog cats hug them man show them love tell them you love them do that man I, i'll even say it man it sounds sentimental and weird but i love you fellas man i'm glad you guys are on this show man like that's just the type of person i am so man uh here here's to 2021 and all the ups and downs and here's to an even better 2022 man so i'm looking forward to this nfl season continuing Looking forward to the show continuing. I'm glad we're back. And uh, fellas, thank you for doing this. And fans, continue to show us love. Continue to show us support. And we'll keep bringing you that funk. Peace.